Welcome to section 4.1.6. Um, before we start this section, I thought I'd do something a little bit different before to get us ready for what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to do a little section now where we show how to find a growth triangle, how to make a growth triangle and fraction. By the way, for those of you who are using a different text or those who have studied it a little bit differently, this is the same as finding the slope of a line. And we also call it the growth of the line. Okay, we're also going to look at finding the starting point, also called the y-intercept of a line in other courses and later in this course. Or the, just in general, this is the place where the line crosses or touches the y-axis. Okay, on this graph paper here, I hope you can see some of the lines and that, but we need to be able to find um, or make what we're going to call growth triangles. Now. I'm going to zoom in on this because this is an idea that I think will help you some. Wherever my blue lines on my graph paper or my vertical and horizontal lines cross, I'm going to call these lattice points. That's what the book calls them and I, I don't know any really other thing to call them other than where the lines cross each other on the graph or grid. Okay, And so we're going to call those lattice points. If I look at my line and I want to make a growth triangle, I want to find a place where the line I have, my black line here, crosses at a lattice point. I'm going to show you real quick some that aren't, and we're going to zoom in to do that. If we zoom in on this line really close, it's kind of easy to see that this place right here is at a lattice point. This one is not. The lattice point is over on this side or over on that side. That's not at a lattice point. That's not at a lattice point. That's not at a lattice point. It doesn't matter which two we connect. For example, I'm going to start by making one that's actually a little too big. And I'm going to start, we're going to go from here to here. That's two lattice points. Let's see if I can get them both in the screen at the same time. And to do that, I have to follow the grid or the graph. I'm not allowed to make my triangle bend. It has to go straight across, and then it has to go straight up. I've talked about this as maybe like driving a car on city streets. You wouldn't drive it through the middle of the block. You would drive it straight along the road and then straight along the other road. After we do that, we can count or find out how much it has changed. Usually I would look over at the axis. I haven't drawn an axis here, so we're going to just going to assume that each block is 1 this time. So if it's 1, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that is a change of 6. Assume these are 1, that's going to be a change of 4. Now, when you're talking about left and right, this is the positive direction, this is the negative. When you're talking about vertical change, this is your positive direction and this is your negative direction. Now, I want to write a fraction for this. And here's the example of what the fraction is going to be. Of course, we have a fraction bar. And on top, I'm going to put the amount it changed going up and down. We often call that, we have a bunch of names for that. One of them is rise, and another one is change in, change in y. Okay, on the bottom, we put the horizontal change. It's also called the run, or the change in X. Okay. So, in this one, my I'm going to put the fraction up here because I don't want you to think that all those other things have to go have to be with it. But basically, I had a change of 6 and it was positive. You don't have to write the positive sign. And a negative and a and 4. That will reduce to a, the fraction 2 thirds. Okay, I wanted to show you, I'm going to zoom back in on the lattice again, and I'm going to make a smaller triangle on the same line. 
let's just go up a little bit to maybe right here. Let's find two places. Here's a nice place. Is that on the lattice? I think it is. Oh, that, there's another one right there. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and make another one of these triangles on the same line. That one went across two, and it went up three. Now, if we write its ratio, its ratio is going to be three halves. And I'm going to correct something for you real quick. I just said six fourths was two thirds, but it doesn't reduce that way. A little dyslexia of the mind happening here. That is three halves. And so what you can see is that even if I pick a small triangle or a large triangle for my lattice point, for my growth triangle, I'm going to get equivalent fractions. Now, let's look at this other line that's going in another direction. And maybe it'll focus in. We're going to find a lattice point on this one. Here's a nice one right there. This doesn't look like one, doesn't look like one, doesn't look like one. That doesn't look like one. It's close. That looks like one there. Okay. Now, this time, when I go across, I'm going to go across. I'm going to need to go this far. So I went over three. And now I've got to go down. Since I went down, I'm going to call this negative. One, two, three, four. Negative four. I'm going to write a fraction for it. And the fraction that I would write for this one is three over negative four. That'll simplify to negative three-fourths. And so that would be my rate. Now, let's see if I can find the other little thing I was going to do with you here. Okay. The next important thing we've got to be able to find is where our line crosses the y-axis. Now there's lots of lines on here, but here is the y-axis. I've colored it yellow so we could see it. And here is my line. Okay, or the line. Where does it cross or touch the y-axis? Well, this one crosses it at 4. Okay, so that is going to become our starting point or our y-intercept. Now, here's a kind of a picture that kind of pulls it all together. Okay, I did a growth triangle on this. On this one, I'm saying I'm going across 2 and up 6. That creates a growth triangle of 6 over 2, which is the same as 3. Okay, this green line crosses my y-axis at 4. So, the main things here are this 4 came from, this 4 came from here, because that's where it crosses. And this 6 over 2, or I could have put 3x here, and I will in a moment, came from our growth triangle. So, just writing this in, this is the values from the growth triangle, and this is the value where it crosses the y-axis. If you know where to look, that's all you really need to do. I am going to write this one more time simplified because I know that 6 over 2 is 3, so I'm going to write it as y equals 3x plus 4. Now, this is what we're going to do in the next video. We're going to go over a bunch of examples of how to do this and then how to reverse the process. But I wanted you to have a good idea of how we found a growth triangle and how we found the starting point or the y-intercept and where they go in the rule. With that, we should be able to do the next ones fairly fast. Hope this helps.